If you've taken a DNA test and discovered Greek ancestry, who were your earliest ancestors there? The answer isn't as simple as you might think. Your Greek roots likely trace back to distinct ancient populations, each with their own fascinating story. A groundbreaking discovery by a team of geneticists recently sent shockwaves through the archaeological community. After analysing ancient DNA from Bronze Age sites across Greece, they discovered something that contradicted decades of established historical theory. The results were so unexpected that some scholars initially questioned the methodology, but the evidence was undeniable. Modern Greeks, it turned out, shared 90% of their DNA with people who lived in the same region over 4,000 years ago. This wasn't just genetic similarity. This was unprecedented continuity that defied conventional wisdom about ancient migrations, conquests, and population replacements that supposedly swept through Greece over millennia. How could this be possible? How had the Greek people maintained such remarkable genetic stability through the rise and fall of empires, massive population movements, and countless invasions that historians claimed had transformed the region. The answer lay buried in caves, encoded in mitochondrial DNA, and scattered across Y-chromosome markers that told a story far more complex than anyone had imagined. Deep in a limestone cave in northern Greece, archaeologists made a discovery that would challenge our understanding of human evolution itself. The skull they found in Petrolona Cave wasn't just old, it was impossibly old. Dating techniques placed it between 200,000 and 700,000 years ago, making it one of the earliest evidence of human presence in Europe. But here's where the story becomes intriguing. This wasn't modern Homo sapiens. It was Homo heidelbergensis, an ancient human species that had somehow reached Greece hundreds of thousands of years before our own species even existed. The skull was accompanied by sophisticated Aculean stone tools, suggesting these early humans possessed advanced cognitive abilities. What did this mean for Greek ancestry? At first glance, nothing. Ancient DNA doesn't survive that long in Mediterranean climates. These early inhabitants left no genetic trace we could measure, or so everyone assumed. The real revelation came when geneticists began analysing modern Greek DNA and found something unexpected. Approximately 2% Neanderthal ancestry. This percentage matched other European populations, but its presence in Greece told a different story. It meant that when Neanderthals later occupied these same caves, sites like Theopetra and Thessaly, they weren't just passing through. They were establishing long-term communities, crafting Mousterian tools, and eventually interbreeding with the modern humans who would replace them. The implications were staggering. Greece hadn't just been a way station in human migration. It had been a crossroads where different human species met, mingled, and left genetic signatures that persist today. Around 40,000 years ago, something remarkable happened. Anatomically modern humans began flooding into Europe, armed with sophisticated upper Paleolithic technology and complex cultural systems. They swept across the continent, replacing Neanderthal populations and establishing the genetic foundation for all subsequent European peoples. In Greece, these early modern humans left clear archaeological evidence at sites like Franchthi Cave and Apodema Cave. They belonged to specific genetic lineages mitochondrial DNA haplogroups U5 and U2, and Y-chromosome haplogroup I2. These weren't random genetic markers, they represented the founding population of Paleolithic Europe. But here's the puzzle. If these hunter-gatherers were the original inhabitants of Greece, where did they go? When geneticists examined modern Greek DNA, they found only trace amounts of these ancient European hunter-gatherer lineages. The dominant genetic signals came from somewhere else entirely. It was as if the original inhabitants of Greece had vanished, replaced by people with completely different ancestral origins. The answer to this mystery would reshape our understanding of one of history's most important transitions. The Neolithic Revolution Around 7000 BC, farming arrived in Greece. But this wasn't simply the spread of agricultural technology. It was a complete population replacement. DNA studies by researchers like Hofmanova and Mathieson revealed that Neolithic farmers from Anatolia had replaced up to 90% of the existing hunter-gatherer ancestry in many regions of Greece. This should have been a violent conquest. The archaeological evidence suggested otherwise. The genetic replacement happened gradually, over centuries. There were no mass graves, no evidence of warfare, no sudden cultural disruption. Instead, the evidence pointed to something far more intriguing voluntary mixing between two very different populations. The Anatolian farmers brought mitochondrial DNA haplogroups N1A, T2, and K, 
along with Y chromosome lineages G2A and J2. These genetic signatures spread from Thessaly southward, eventually reaching every corner of Greece. But the process wasn't uniform. Islands like Crete developed unique genetic profiles that would persist for millennia. Why did the hunter-gatherers allow themselves to be genetically absorbed? The answer lay in the revolutionary advantages of farming, reliable food supplies, larger populations, and the ability to support non-food-producing specialists. The hunter-gatherers didn't disappear. They joined a new way of life that their descendants would carry forward for thousands of years. By 3200 BC, the genetic foundation laid by Neolithic farmers had given rise to something unprecedented in European prehistory sophisticated maritime civilizations with no parallel north of the Alps. The Minoans of Crete and the Cycladic cultures of the central Aegean had developed complex societies that seemed to appear from nowhere. Where had they come from? The Lazaridis study provided the answer, and it was both simple and profound. They hadn't come from anywhere. They were the direct descendants of the Neolithic farmers, with virtually no outside genetic influence. The Minoans carried mitochondrial DNA haplogroups H, H, V, T, and K, lineages connecting them directly to their Anatolian ancestors. Their Y chromosome profile showed J2 and G2 a dominance, with almost no trace of the steppe-related lineages transforming northern Europe. This genetic isolation wasn't due to primitive technology. The Minoans were accomplished seafarers who traded across the eastern Mediterranean. They maintained extensive diplomatic and commercial networks with Egypt, Anatolia, and the Levant. Yet somehow they preserved their genetic integrity for over a millennium. The secret lay in their maritime supremacy. Control of the sea lanes allowed them to engage with other civilizations on their own terms, taking what they wanted, goods, ideas, technologies, while maintaining their cultural and genetic independence. They had created fortress islands that were simultaneously cosmopolitan and closed. But this isolation wouldn't last forever. Around 1600 BC, everything changed. The Mycenaeans emerged in mainland Greece, bringing with them revolutionary innovations, bronze weaponry, and most importantly, the first written form of the Greek language. But were the Mycenaeans really Greek? The genetic evidence revealed a shocking truth. The Mycenaeans were approximately 80% identical to the Minoans they eventually conquered. The remaining 20% told a different story entirely. That 20% came from the Eastern European steppes, specifically from populations related to the Yamnaya culture that had spread Indo-European languages across much of Eurasia. This steppe ancestry brought new Y-chromosome lineages, like R1b and possibly R1a, into the Greek gene pool. Here was the proof that the Indo-Europeanization of Greece wasn't a mass migration or violent conquest. It was a genetic and cultural transformation involving relatively small numbers of steppe-derived peoples who somehow imposed their language and culture on the existing Aegean population. How had such a small genetic contribution resulted in such massive cultural change? The answer lay in the nature of Bronze Age society and the power of new military technologies. The steppe peoples brought not just genetic lineages, but horses, chariots, and metallurgical knowledge that revolutionized warfare and social organization. The collapse of Mycenaean civilization around 1100 BC has puzzled historians for centuries. Ancient sources blamed Dorian invasions, waves of Greek-speaking peoples from the north who supposedly destroyed the Bronze Age palaces and ushered in the Dark Ages. But if the Dorians really conquered Greece, where was their genetic signature? Ancient DNA from the post-Mycenaean period revealed something unexpected. Remarkable genetic stability. The fundamental Mycenaean genetic profile remained essentially unchanged. Mitochondrial lineages H and J became more dominant, but this could be explained by genetic drift in smaller populations rather than invasion. The Y chromosome evidence was more intriguing. But the change was gradual, not dramatic, more like infiltration than invasion. The truth about the Dorians was more complex than ancient historians realized. They weren't foreign invaders, but Greek speaking peoples who were already part of the broader Mycenaean world. Their invasions were more likely internal migrations and political reorganizations within an existing Greek population. This realization explained one of the great mysteries of Greek history, how the Greeks emerged from the Dark Ages, speaking the same language and sharing the same mythological traditions as their Mycenaean predecessors. When Rome conquered Greece in 146 BC, 
contemporaries predicted the end of Greek civilization. The Romans themselves acknowledged they were conquering their cultural superiors. But conquest was conquest. Large numbers of Romans, Italians, and other Mediterranean peoples flooded into Greek cities. Yet genetic studies of this period reveal a paradox, minimal overall genetic change. How was this possible? The answer lay in the patterns of Roman settlement and the resilience of rural Greek populations. While cities like Athens and Corinth became cosmopolitan centres with diverse populations, the Greek countryside remained largely unchanged. Mountains, islands and rural areas served as genetic refugia where ancient Greek lineages persisted. The rural-urban divide created a two-tier genetic system. Urban Greeks absorbed foreign influences and developed more diverse genetic profiles, while rural Greeks maintained ancestral lineages with minimal admixture. This pattern would repeat throughout Greek history, allowing ancient genetic signatures to survive even dramatic political changes. But the Romans brought more than just genetic diversity. They brought Christianity, administrative integration, and eventually the transformation of the Roman Empire into the Byzantine Empire, changes that would create new patterns of migration and cultural identity. The 6th and 7th centuries AD witnessed one of the most significant demographic events in medieval European history, the Slavic migrations. Archaeological evidence clearly documents Slavic settlement throughout the Balkans, including substantial parts of Greece. Byzantine sources describe these migrations in apocalyptic terms, suggesting massive population displacement. Some historians argue that Greece became predominantly Slavic during this period, only to be re-Hellenized during the later Byzantine period. But the genetic evidence tells a different story. Why chromosome analysis does reveal the introduction of R1, a lineages typically associated with Slavic populations, particularly in northern Greece and parts of the Peloponnese. However, these lineages represent a minority component of the overall genetic profile. The fundamental Greek genetic signature remained dominant even in regions with the strongest archaeological evidence of Slavic settlement. How could such apparently massive migrations have such limited genetic impact? The answer lay in the nature of early medieval demographics and the absorption capacity of established populations. The Slavic migrations, while significant, involved relatively small numbers of people entering regions with larger existing populations. Over time, the Slavs were genetically absorbed while contributing specific lineages that marked their historical presence. The Ottoman conquest of Greece in the 15th century created another historical puzzle. For nearly four centuries, Greece was part of an empire centred in Anatolia, with substantial Turkish settlement in some regions and complex patterns of religious conversion. Popular mythology suggests massive demographic transformation during this period, but genetic analysis reveals something unexpected, minimal Turkish genetic influence in most of Greece. The exception proves the rule. Eastern Thrace and parts of Macedonia do show evidence of Central Asian ancestry associated with Turkish populations. But even in these regions, the signal is modest. In most of Greece, particularly rural areas and islands, the Ottoman period left virtually no detectable genetic trace. This finding challenged assumptions about the demographic impact of political conquest. The Ottomans ruled Greece for centuries but remained a political and military elite, rather than a colonizing population. Intermarriage occurred but was limited by religious and cultural barriers that maintained genetic separation between rulers and ruled. The genetic evidence also illuminated the complex relationship between religious and ethnic identity during the Ottoman period. The 1923 population exchange between Greece and Turkey represented one of the largest forced migrations in modern history. Over a million Orthodox Christians from Anatolia resettled in Greece, while hundreds of thousands of Muslims made the reverse journey. From a genetic perspective, this exchange revealed something fascinating about the shared history of the Aegean region. The Anatolian Greeks who arrived in Greece carried genetic profiles remarkably similar to those of their new neighbours. This similarity reflected the shared ancient history of the Aegean, where similar populations had inhabited both sides of the sea for millennia. The exchange effectively reunited populations that had been politically separated, but remained genetically connected. It also provided geneticists with a natural experiment in population movement and integration. Contemporary genetic studies have now provided definitive answers to questions that have puzzled historians for centuries. The 2022 Lazaridis study building on earlier research, demonstrated that modern Greeks maintain approximately 90% genetic continuity with Bronze Age Mycenaeans and Neolithic Aegeans. 
This level of continuity is extraordinary by European standards and explains many puzzling aspects of Greek history. The persistence of Greek language, culture, and identity through millennia of political upheaval becomes comprehensible when viewed through the lens of genetic continuity. But the modern Greek genetic profile isn't uniform. Regional variations tell specific historical stories. Northern Greeks show greater Slavic influence, reflecting medieval migrations. Island populations preserve the greatest ancient continuity, with Crete and other isolated islands maintaining Neolithic-like profiles. The Peloponnese shows complex patterns reflecting its turbulent history of Slavic settlement and later recolonization. The Y chromosome distribution reveals the layered nature of Greek ancestry. J2 and E1B1B represent the largest components, reflecting Neolithic and Bronze Age foundations, while R1B, I2 influences from Indo-Europeans, ancient Europeans, and other sources. Mitochondrial DNA tells a complementary story. Haplogroup H dominates, as throughout Europe, but Greece also shows significant frequencies of U5, J, T, and K, lineages traceable to different periods of Greek prehistory and history. Perhaps the most remarkable aspect of Greek genetic history is how exceptional it is. Most European populations show evidence of massive genetic transformations during the Bronze Age, Iron Age, or Medieval period. The Greeks are different. They represent a rare example of a population that achieved genetic stability early in its history and maintained it through thousands of years of cultural and political change. This stability allowed them to preserve not only ancient genetic lineages, but also cultural continuities that connect modern Greeks directly to their Bronze Age ancestors. The geographic factors that enabled this continuity, islands, mountains, and favourable agricultural conditions, created natural barriers to genetic replacement while supporting large, stable populations capable of absorbing limited immigration without losing their fundamental character. Cyprus provides the most extreme example of this phenomenon. Cypriot Greeks show even greater genetic continuity with ancient Aegean populations than mainland Greeks. The Greek case has implications far beyond understanding one nation's ancestry. It demonstrates that major historical events, conquests, migrations, cultural transformations, may have less genetic impact than commonly assumed. Established populations with strong cultural identities and favourable environmental conditions can maintain their genetic integrity even in the face of significant political and social change. This finding challenges simplistic models of ancient population movement and suggests that cultural and genetic history don't always align in predictable ways. The adoption of new languages, religions or political systems doesn't necessarily require genetic replacement. The answer, at least for the Greeks, is both simple and profound. They are exactly who they have always claimed to be, the descendants of the people who built the first European civilizations, who created the foundations of Western culture, and who have maintained their identity across the vast expanses of time. The DNA doesn't lie. It confirms what the Greeks themselves have always known. The investigation continues, and the most fascinating discoveries may still lie ahead.